Yeah, the best of luck with that. Now then, with 80 England caps uh, in a 16-year career on the pitch without a single red or yellow card, Gary Lineker has wow. inspired a generation of young footballers. And now he's celebrating the spirit of good sportsmanship in his new book. Here it is, 50 Times Football Changed the World. And he joins us now to tell us more. Good morning. It's always lovely having you here. Good morning. I've had a few cards after my career. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> but during, <laughs> not, not a one. Um, this, is, this is a lovely book. I mean, it, you know, people love football, people are obsessed mm. with football, but these are 50 beautiful stories mm. that really make you fall in love with the game that little bit more, I think. Yeah, I hope so. And it's, it's obviously targeted at um, a fairly young audience yeah. and um, get, hopefully get them interested in football and realise that... Um, the power for good that it is. Mm. Yes. But what were you yeah. saying earlier on? Because you're saying there aren't well, many like that. Yeah, I mean, just any sort of footballing stories for kids, there's not an awful lot. I mean, I've got two boys that were yeah. obsessed with it. Mm. I mean, even Bell to, to a certain point. But there wasn't, there isn't much, so mm. I'm going to be stealing this one off you, if that's well, all right. You, you, you're or, more or than Chester, But, it, you know, they, they do want to start reading and they want yeah. to read about stuff they're interested in. And, of mm. course, football for, for many kids is, is right. a big and thing. I think it, the, the way it's done in the short stories, and it, yeah. it makes yeah. it interesting for, you know, because... How do you whittle it down to... 50 then, because um, it's, a, it's a long history. Well, I did it with Ivor Badil, and um, it, it, it took us a while, because we, we, we came up with, like, with between us and research and everything else, we came up with a bit of quite a number more than 50, but yeah. then kind of narrowed it down mm. and um, came up with what we thought were perhaps... Um, the most remarkable and the most um, fascinating ones. Well, I think really. the, be the best example of most recent example yeah. of football being a force for good was Marcus Rashford. Yep. And you talk and about he's him. in there. He's you in. talk about him here, and this was, you know, mm. almost something where you go, actually, it shouldn't be a footballer's responsibility. This feeding our children, no, but it, it really shouldn't. But however, it just goes mm. to show you, like, there is a footballer using his platform for. For greatness. It did, and some people will will argue that they perhaps footballers shouldn't do that, and I get it myself. Stick to football and all this nonsense. Yeah. But when you've got big platforms that footballers do, um, if you, if you can use that for good, yeah. and that was obviously a very good thing, is to feed mm -hmm. um, young children, um, is is a wonderful thing. And I think, especially during that pandemic period, I think football came to the good. And young mm. footballers, I was so proud of so many of them, you know, Jordan yeah. Henderson got the captains together and they did so much for the NHS. You've got Marcus Rashford, Raheem Sterling on different mm. things. So they've, they've done brilliantly, I think. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. There are many areas that um, sports people can push a cause forward and Stonewall FC is one of them. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, they were the, f the first all-gay um, football side and, and they proved to be quite successful mm -hmm. as well. And, and it just makes the whole sport more inclusive, mm. um, which is a really important thing because obviously we've, you know, there've been issues and, and now probably because of that, I think it was about 1991, um, since then, of course, now we're starting to get footballers come out not yeah. very many not very many for it and, it, and I, I understand probably you know their fears and trepidations but there'll be plenty out there that are having to to hide things but and, and hopefully the fact that one or two have in in recent memory um there'll be more that are encouraged to do so because come on i mean it doesn't help though that you've got the world yeah. cup in qatar where actually no. being gay yeah. is illegal and in no. fact it carries a seven-year prison sentence mm. i mean that's not going to help at all no, not at all. I mean, I, mean, I was very outspoken about the fact when it went to Qatar, when I mean, it was a very corrupt bid. We all know that. That's subsequently been proven. I think mm. pretty much everyone on that, yeah. that committee at FIFA at the time is either, mm. the, either behind bars or, or banned from football, yeah. uh, most of them anyway. Um, so, you know, FIFA have changed things since then to a degree, but we're stuck with the World Cup. It is what it is, yeah. I, I, you know, we'll, we'll go out there. And I think it's really important, you know, with, with sport washing and things like that, um, if you keep talking about these things that are wrong, mm -hmm. then, you know, sport washing perhaps won't win. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, we've got to go to a World Cup. Um, I'll be going there to report it. I'd mm -hmm. say not support it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, once the football gets started, we'll all be, you know, we'll be so engrossed in it. How do, you, how do you think the Qataris feel about this? I mean, I they've, managed, they've, hi they've hired a, a, yeah. a very high-profile ambassador mm -hmm. in, in David Beckham. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so do you think that this global stage with people like you saying you know football is amazing but it shouldn't be there yeah. on, a, on a worldwide stage with such questionable human rights yeah it, it, it's a really difficult one different people would handle it in, in different ways but obviously all the teams are going to go it's a world cup it's it, it's huge um you know we'll be there itv will be there as well of course mm -hmm. um so it's 
I think it's very important that we, we talk about the various issues yeah. and the human rights issues and, and, and what happened with um, so many workers during the stadium um, building um, process. And, you know, no, no, no country's perfect on human rights and we've got our own issues, but I think it's very important that, that we are very vocal about it about whilst we're there. The, um, I mean, you know, football, it can also be really uh, uh, uniting and mm. inspirational. And another one of the stories from here, and probably like one of the highlights of my summer, was the Lionesses of winning. Oh, no, it's amazing, wasn't it? And so many, I mean, so many children universally just sort of inspired by it, but particularly girls. Yeah. You know, my, my niece has started a girls' football mm. team. Belle plays in a football team. The school have now started playing yeah. football for, for the girls as well. Like, it was a real game changer, that, literally. Yeah. I mean, that's very much the, the, yeah. the, the concept of the book is the game-changing aspect of football. Yeah. And that was, that was one, particularly for, for this country, obviously, yeah. because, you know, elsewhere, like America, for example, women's football is, is, is really big and mm -hmm. they're excellent at it, although we beat them last week. We did. Um, so I think um, it's, for someone who's been involved in football all his life, it's yeah. been like that one ever present in my life, it's just, it's fantastic what, what happened because mm. it, it gets more people interested in the game I love. Mm. So now you've got more women going to football. When I played, you hardly ever saw a woman's face in the crowd. Mm. Yeah. Um, whereas now it's getting that there are more and more women's faces. That more women's football is improving immeasurably, mm. really quickly. Um, young girls are starting to play. We've got to make sure that schools allow them to play as yeah. well, because there's a lot don't. Yeah. So all these things will come from that, and we'll get more people involved in the game and young women playing. And this, and and it, it's it's just a great thing. Yeah. Football does permeate every area of your life, mm. um, <laughs> uh, especially with the name of your new puppy. Uh. <laughs> Philbert, yeah. Philbert. Philbert, yeah. What is Philbert? He's a dog. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's a dog. No, there he is. Know, Look at the little picture there he of him. Is. Yeah, he's Phil, but I, I, it's, it's quite... It's a, is he hus like husky? He's half husky, half Aussie shepherd. He's a rescue. Uh, um, it's a bit of a long story. I mean, it was, I, was, I was on... We love a long went, dog story here. I went to LA um, on my holiday about yeah. six months ago, eight, yeah. seven months ago. And the first night, I was stay at this place. It's got a nice little rooftop pool. And, and two of my friends, Reggie and Reese, came up. And, and Reggie had... Philbert with him. He wasn't called Philbert then, but so he had his dog with him, and he was, it was a little puppy, and um, he was jumping all over me. And I went, "Oh, I love your dog." And he went, "Well, it's not my dog. He said, my dog's at home." He said, "But I also foster dogs." He said, "And I've just got him, so I couldn't really leave him, so I brought him up." He chose four you. drinks later. <laughs> I'll have him. I'll have him. And then he said, "I'll ask you again in the morning." Uh, and, and, we, and we kind of made it happen. Uh, well, he's, he's mad, Philbert but... because Philbert Street is Leicester City's yeah. home yeah. ground until 2002. Yeah. And, um, and if you leave Philbert at home... Um, uh... <laughs> he, he's a lovely dog. He's a lovely yeah. boy. He's, he's, he's really lovely, but he can't be left on his own. He gets mm. in a bit of a pickle. And you thought your son George was going around to look after him? Uh, oh, that, yes. He, George was going... Well, he was going around. Um, I was away, actually. I was in Ibiza, and I, I've, I've got kind of rotation system with my four... Boys, they're all grown up now, so they, they look after him. So I said, can any of you watch him tomorrow? And George said, um, I can do it. But I sent the message about 11.30 at night. George obviously saw it in the morning, said, replied, I can do it. I went, great. So I called him about 7 o'clock in the evening. Everything OK with the dog? He went, huh. I won't say what, exactly what he said, but he went, oh, oh no. no. I went, I went, what do you mean? He went, I thought you meant tomorrow. Oh, because no. Because he'd woken up yeah, and seen, yeah. so I've gone, oh, no. So what was the damage? So it was, um... About five sets of curtains, a <laughs> couple of doors. Philbert! There we go. Uh, oh, you got the, oh, picture, yeah, the pictures. Not on you, know. Philbert. Oh, yeah. dear. Uh, uh, listen, you love them all the but same. But it's only, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's curtains. Um, <laughs> it's, it's curtains. It's curtains. It's curtains. It's curtains. It's Congratulations with this. 50 thank times you. football changed the world, yeah. and that is out now. Yeah, and thank you very much for the plug. Well, you're, you're very, very welcome. welcome. Thank you very much for coming in. <laughs>